Hello there, and a very warm welcome to another video from Change Tips and Tools. It's me again, Phil, the Brummie that hails from Birmingham, England. And I'm here again with another requested video, this time on the rolling wave planning approach and how to deal with this in MS Project from a lags and deadline perspective. Well, let's talk about the theory first before we dive into MS Project. So, what is a rolling wave planning approach? Well, this is probably more recognised with agile frameworks, but can also be applied to waterfall. Fundamentally, a rolling wave planning is a technique where teams work within smaller waves or periods to accommodate levels of uncertainty and therefore expected change. Deliverables are described as high-level work packages that are decomposed into detailed activities when you have the level of confidence and detail necessary to do so. If not, it remains at a high-level work package until you have that relevant detail. Now, the horizon of certainty has a similar set of principles based on time and the associated level of confidence. For example, take a deliverable that is due in six months will have less detail and confidence, i.e. is more likely to change, where something you will deliver next month will have far more detail and therefore is less likely to change. Now, based on these two concepts, progressive elaboration is where you reiterate your plan or decompose your work package over time. And this is done at certain points in your plan, based on your horizon of certainty and the level of detail. So you progressively elaborate your plan through iterations. So with these principles in mind, let's dive into MS Project with a focus on lags and deadlines. Here I have a simple MS Project plan to demonstrate the principles that we've just discussed. So I have Project Widget A here with three work packages, each at varying levels of detail. So if we take work package one and expand that, we can see we have a lower level of detail here and I've created dependencies on this that follow a typical waterfall approach here, as you can see. Now, I've also planned some additional activities to do the detail planning for work package two and the high level planning for work package three and then to set a baseline or re-baseline these based on the next iteration of planning. Let's expand work package two. So I've got um, a low level of confidence in this and a low level of detail. And then work package three, because it's further out, I've got an even lower uh, level of confidence in this plan. And this is where I think there's gonna be the greatest degree of variance. So let's look at how we can accommodate this variance by using an approach in our dependencies. So for example, if we say work package two, and again, you would define this through your planning approach, is that let's say work package two, based on the level of certainty, we have a 20% degree of uncertainty. So we think it could change by up to 20% based on the estimates that we've got in here at the moment. And then work package three, we're saying that it could be up to a 40% degree of uncertainty. So the way that we could put this to account for that level of uncertainty at this stage is use the lags. And the way that I'm gonna do that, if I take the first task here, so this has got a dependency on task one, what I'm gonna do in the formula bar here is I'm gonna type finish start, and then I'm gonna add 20%. By doing so, what I've done is said, right, I am adding 
20% of the total duration of task one. So it then moves it out accordingly. So it's applying a lag of 20% that is equivalent to a 20% variance on task one based on its overall duration. So I'm going to apply that through as a, a set lag. So again, on task 19, I'm going to do finish start plus 20%. I'm going to repeat that all the way through these tasks here. And there you go. So I've now got a, a lag that I've put within the dependency. So it's a finish start dependency. So again, just to reiterate, based on the 20% uncertainty, so this could vary based on 20%, is I've put a finish start plus 20% of the previous task duration. And it's added that on as a lag. So now let's look at task one and task two here in work package three, which is even further out. And that's got a 40% uh, variance on it so based on the uncertainty so I'm going to go into here again so on task 2 I'm going to do a finish start plus oops plus 40% lag so again this time I've added 40% of task 1's duration so 40% of task one, so that's 60 days. So 40% of that is 24. So I've added a 24 day lag on that. So this will start, task two will start 24 days after task one finishes. Okay, hopefully that makes sense the way I'm using that percentage. So again, on task 26, I'm gonna do finish start plus 40 percent and return now thinking about this is now i've applied this and again if i just do view so we can see the whole so view an entire project so i can see the entire project so based on this now we've got a duration of 56 days on work package one we've got a duration of 138 days based on these lags that we've put into work package two and then we've got a duration of 133 days based on the lags that we put on tasks within work package three now the ideal thing to do here is is once you've got that that variance is that we know around april time based on this timeline we're going to do some detailed planning and this is where we're going to based on additional information that we'll gather during work package one or whether we've done some research during work package one's activities on work package two is that we'll then refine the detail on this plan and also refine the lag also so we'll change the lag so we might take the lag off or we might lower that lag percentage as well now based on this it is dynamic based on the duration. So if I change the duration of task one, that will have an impact on the start date of task two based on the way that this finished start is calculating. So let me do a baseline here. So what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna go into project and set the baseline. And I'm gonna do it for the entire project. So if I then go to my, my view here and go to the Gantt, tracking Gantt, and again, view entire project so I can see the whole thing. I can now see my baseline, my initial baseline. And obviously we've set the expectation with our uh, stakeholders that work package two will be delivered based on a 20% plus or minus variance. So therefore, worst case scenario, it will be delivered on the 5th of November, or it could be reduced, or it could be delivered sooner. So one of the things that you will then agree with your stakeholders is a deadline. So work package one, the deadline is gonna be, because we've got the highest degree of certainty here, so I'm gonna set a deadline against this one for the 25th of April. 
I'm going to double click on that task. In the advanced tab, I'm going to set this to be the 25th of April. So like so. Now let me just set the deadlines for the other milestones in this plan. And again on this one, and you'll notice the dates are exactly the same and the reason being is there's no duration here. So 40% of zero is zero. So it won't change that. And again, I'm going to change this deadline date. So you've now got deadlines on here. Now, that's great. So we've now put something in place where if something slips, so if I make this sort of 20 days just to change, you'll see that some exclamation marks that have appeared here. Now that's great, we can see that and we can see how deadlines are being impacted visual here. But if you've got a thousand line report, that's not great. It won't help you. So what we can do is we can use custom fields and a custom filter to filter the information in here. So if I go to project and I'm going to do custom fields, for the purposes of this exercise, I'm going to use a number field here. So I've got number and I'm going to change, rename this. So number one, I'm going to use that custom field and I'm going to rename it as my deadline status. Like so, yeah. And then I'm going to click OK. And then I'm going to do a formula. So I'm going to click on the formula. And I'm going to use a function. And I'm going to use a general function, which is the if. So the if is basically an expression. If that expression is true, then what do you do? What do you return in this custom field? And if it's false, what do you return in this custom field? So if I select that expression, and what I'm going to do here is a simple test here. I want to know if, using the date field, I want to know if the finish date, either forecast finish date, is greater than my deadline, yeah? So if I go finish date, I then use the operator greater than. So is my finish date, I'm going to take my, my date, is it greater than my deadline? If that's true, I'm going to return the value 1. If it's false, I'm going to return the value 0 and get rid of that. Oh, that statement and then I'm going to click OK here on that one do OK it's just warning me that I'm replacing the contents of this custom field with this formula so I'm going to do OK and then I'm going to click OK now if I then insert that column so I'm going to do in for number so there's that deadline status and you can see now where I've got a, a one here, that's where it's indicating that I've got a problem with the deadline, like so. So I can now hide that so you can see that. So all I've got to do then is on my view is I'm going to do a custom filter and I'm going to do new filter I'm going to call this deadlines at risk or missed that's what I'm going to call it and all I'm going to do is I'm going to say right if the the number column this equals one then I want to see it and I'm going to say show related summary rows so I can see the 
the related summary task so I can see where it is in the plan. And I'm going to go tick that. I'm going to do save. So now I can hide this column. I don't need it anymore to be visible. I can now apply this custom. So deadlines at risk or missed. If I do that, it's now showing me those deadlines that are either at risk or have been missed. Again, if I remove that filter, and we take this task and we put it back to, what was it, two days? Like so. And again, if I do the filter, deadlines at risk or missed, it shows me nothing. No filter. So, I have walked you through an approach in MS Project when it comes to applying a lag based on an expected variance. I've shown you how to add deadlines to your plan and remember, these need to be based on genuine business or project deadlines. Then I showed you how you can track any deadlines at risk or that have been missed through a custom field and filter in MS Project. But the tool can only do so much. When it comes to the rolling wave planning approach or when dealing with horizons of certainty, you need to manage stakeholder expectations through progressive elaboration and plan detail and high level planning activities within your plan to reiterate your plan at certain points in time and agree these decision points with your sponsor and stakeholders. It's also a good practice to manage your stakeholder expectations up front. So set planning levels. So level zero could be a placeholder with a 20 to 40% expected variance. Uh, it could be based on your strategic outline case with high level target delivery dates and your approach. You then got your indicative plan at level one with maybe a five to 20% variance. And this has got all your major phases uh, with resource levels. And then you've got your delivery plan level two where you've got your high detail and high confidence with a 5% variance. Yes, MS Project can help, but people are key here. So invest in them and manage expectations accordingly. Remember, change is the only constant in our lives. Well, with that said, I hope you found this video to be informative. And please remember to like, subscribe, and hit the notifications button for future content. I wish you a wonderful day wherever you are in this world. Take care and I look forward to seeing you in the next video. Bye bye now.